Well, hello and welcome to the show. This week, I want to give you a chance to get to see the whole picture of Ken McNabb, not just the clinician or the TV show weekly, but the whole overall picture. And that involves coming here to the Powderhorn Ranch outside of Douglas, Wyoming. And we're going to take you on a cow drive. We're going to gather some mares and a stud horse off the pasture. We're going to talk about the overall ranching operation that we are blessed to be a part of here. All of that's coming up right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride That cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse I'm Gonna take a ride on one true horse You know, from my earliest memories, I've been involved in ranching and with ranching families. And that's the dream that my wife and I share. And so a few years ago, Diamond Ranches came to us and said, hey, what about working out a horse program with us? And so we sat down and we, we ironed out what we were gonna do. And we came up with the Diamond McNabb Ranch Horse Sale. And to make that really work, they invited us to move here and to run that operation here off the ranch. And so it gives us the, a great opportunity to be involved in working cattle ranches every day when we're home without having to be frankly responsible for all of it when we're gone on the road. It's our desire to, to ranch, but we love going out on the road and meeting people. And so this operation here has come together to make just the perfect environment for us to, to raise and train horses in and to come home and raise our children in and to be a part of the ranching. So it's, it's a neat model, if you will, on how the, the horse program works together with the, the cattle operation. When I was a kid, very few people had horse trailers. Several guys had stock racks and they would load a horse or two into the back of a pickup and take him somewhere. But if you had to move any number of horses, you did it horseback. That's drastically changed with the, the invention of the fifth wheel trailer and the and the gooseneck trailer and the, and the fifth wheel pin in the bed of everybody's pickup, well, that's affected the horses too because the horses are no longer necessarily used the way they used to be used. And so in designing this program uh, here on Diamond Ranches, Deemer True and I sat down and said, how do we want to do this? And one of the things that we said, you know, is really got to be paramount is that if you could take a four wheeler to do the job, you don't. If it's an emergency and you need a motorized vehicle, great. But otherwise, this is a horse program. This is a, this is a cattle ranch run horseback. And so, you know, people will say, well, gee, I could run up there in you know, five minutes on a four-wheeler. That's not the point. We're creating great horses here. So saddle a horse up, hop on him, and head up the road horseback and do that same job. You can see just the terrain we're riding through right here. And this isn't set up for the camera, this is just the terrain. And, and you know, some people go around a tree this way and somebody else that way. And, and in the long run, we're building horses that have been, you know, they, they've kind of been to the battle and they've seen everything. And we're pretty confident that when our horses leave us in the spring, they're never gonna see anything they haven't already seen. There's a lot that goes into the management of the ranch in general. So, you know, if you look at your cycle of your year, if you, if you start in January, you, you sort of have a little bit of downtime. And then depending on where you are uh, in the world, your calving season probably starts somewhere towards the end of January. 
and you're going to calve through March, or perhaps your calving season doesn't really start until the first of March and you're gonna calve through April. Once the calving hits, you're busy. You're busy night and day. God designed most animals to birth in warm weather. You know, mid to late spring, early summer, that's your normal birthing uh, area in the wild as well as really for domestic livestock. But man, in our infinite wisdom, has changed that. And we have moved up the breeding seasons and therefore the calving or foaling seasons to colder weather. So you look around, it's a pretty cold day. It's three degrees below zero right now. And uh, it's the 30th of January. And we're headed down to the Tomahawk Division. Uh, Doug Moore has started calving. He's been calving the last few days down there. And he's calving out registered Angus calves that are embryo transfer calves. And so it's kind of a full-time job to keep an eye on these cows as they calve throughout the day. He called this morning and said he could use a hand down there right now. He's got something going on. And so we're headed down there. And in all truth, by the time we get there, it may or may not be well taken care of. You run, there's ice under here. Everything's on the ground. She's already calved. Well, the calf's already born. He's just, you see he's knuckling over on the front. He hasn't even stood up long enough to have nursed the first time. we will probably get in, get out of here and leave him alone. We'll come back in a little while and make sure they've nursed. This is a registered Angus calf out of a, probably a purebred Angus cow, but a commercial cow. You can see he's pretty new. We got here a little late, but the good thing is he didn't need us. So even though we're a touch late, uh, that's plenty good. He didn't need any help. Somewhere in late April, we start foaling. And so we've got the foaling process. We put the studs out with the mares in May. So we're gonna start uh, watching over those mares and foals outside every day. You've got the cattle that you're continually checking on and watching. And, and you know, you're really hoping that, that they're all healthy and they stay healthy and they, and they stay good and sound. As you come into the fall season, not only are you still finishing up harvest, uh, rather you're, you're taking grain off the fields or taking the last cutting of hay off the field, you're also starting to, to bring cattle in off the mountains. To me, God invented cattle simply to be chased by horses and horses simply to work cattle on. And the two go hand in hand, and this is to me the reason I ride. The Diamond McNabb Ranch Horse Sale is the one sale of the year you don't want to miss. Make plans now to attend the sale on June 4th, 2011 at Powderhorn Ranch in Douglas, Wyoming and choose from a wide selection of hand-picked ranch and recreation-ready geldings. New in 2011, the Diamond McNabb Ranch Horse Sale will include a few outstanding ranch mares. Don't get left in the dust. Make plans to join us June 4th in Douglas by visiting dmhorses.com or calling 307-233-3909. Now back to Discovering the Horseman Within with Ken McNabb. We handle our horses in the winter a little differently than some perhaps. Uh, we're not as range uh, strict as some outfits, but we're certainly, our horses spend a lot more time on the range than they do in. These colts are young. These are just coming two-year-olds. And so they're seen every day. 
but they're out. They're not in a barn. They're out in a pasture setting. They're fed. Uh, they're lightly grained. We don't grain real heavy, uh, but they're, they're fed a little bit every day. The brood mares are handled the same way. The mature geldings who aren't being prepared for the sale, uh, the next year's horses are out on a pasture where they range and when the weather demands it, they're fed. Uh, but in general, you know, we try to let them be horses. They stay out. It's three below zero today or four below zero. We need some of these horses in. That's just one of the jobs. Come down, get them, sort them, and get them ready to go in. Even though it's cold and, and not that much fun, it's just the way it is. And it allows the horse a chance and time to actually be a horse. And this is the way God designed them to be. He created them to be out here. They grow a hair coat accordingly, and they learn to adjust. You know, I, I would say we're one of the few ranches in the world that has you know, $20,000 colts. Uh, as far as the stud fees, we've got uh, some colts here. The stud fee was ten to $20,000, depending on which colt it is. And they're raised out in the snow and the cold, and that's not real uh, prevalent, although it does happen. We're not the only ones that do it. Uh, but it allows them to be a horse. And then if they make it through that in good shape, and, and we do uh, a really stringent job of vet care. If they need vet care, we're on it right away. That's why we see them every day. But at the same time, if they come through all of that, then they've got the brain to be a horse that we want. Then we put them in our program. One of the questions that I'm asked really frequently is, Ken, what's your program for babies? What do you do? Well, this here is a very good example of what we do. We handle our babies. We handle the mares all summer. They're out on the range, but we go through, we check on them. They get accustomed to seeing us. Once we wean the babies, we give them about a month to kind of settle in, a month to two months, depending on our scheduling. We get them solid on feed where we're not disturbing them, let them get over the emotional trauma of being weaned. Then we bring them down here in the barn and we put two to a stall so they're comfortable, they've got a friend. Once we get to where we can scratch on them and pet on them and rub on them, we start slipping a halter on and off. Once that's successful, then we start teaching them to give to the pressure of that halter. Once they lead around really good, we start working on their legs, picking up their feet. What I want to know is that I, got, I have my hands on a baby and I can do whatever I need to for a vet, for a farrier, that's enough. Sometimes I think we get teaching our babies more than is necessary and we start to burn out their mind. So I like to let them be babies. We'll spend about three days on these babies. They'll go out, the next group will come in, and at the end of a week, we'll have halter broke every baby on the ranch. Then what they'll do is uh, start just putting a little bit more uh, groundwork on them, handling them a little bit more, ground driving a little bit, those kind of things, so that they're ready to be started under saddle as a two-year-old. But we don't start under saddle until they're two years old. Give him just a touch of slack. Let him see where he's going. Give, yeah, give him a little slack. I'll provide the momentum. Situation like this, when we, when we pull on the halter and he's got a board to step over, he gets his chin up and he can't see and he's gonna kinda sull up and start pulling back. So what I've done is had Mike give him a little slack and I'll just provide there. As soon as I see him think and look like he's actually gonna try, I back off and release. It's no different than any other project with any other horse. If they try a little bit, I give to them. If they don't, I'm going to keep increasing the pressure until they start to figure out what it is we're looking for. So they'll have about two weeks of training, actual training time, before they're a two-year-old. Then as a two-year-old, they'll go into the program. We'll start them as unbroke horses and start, start developing that lifelong partner that we really want. And that lifelong partnership starts right here, just like with that little baby just now, where we start teaching them to try. If they'll try, we release. By, by doing that from the time they're first involved with us until they're completely done with us, they have learned how to win and they've learned how to be a partner. And that's what I want from my babies. I don't worry about anything else. If they'll try, that's enough for me. All right, we're uh, headed up the creek here to gather uh, a little pasture full of mares and babies and, the, and a stud horse. And the stud horse has been progressively getting a little more assertive all summer to uh, the riders that go up there. 
until he's started actually aggressively running them off and kicking and striking and squealing. So I've kind of pulled out the secret weapons for the day and I've got old Rooster and Rooster's 19 and it's kind of a shame to, to have to make the old man work, but uh, he's not that old and the work keeps him young to be honest. So I'll go up there and uh, work the stud a little bit and then sort of see if we can't line them out and bring those mares and babies down here and we'll put them in the corral here, sort the babies off and wean them uh, and haul them down to another set of corrals and haul the mares off and the stud, he'll go to the barn and back into training. We come out here on foot every now and then or with a pickup truck and grain them. And then on foot, he's gentle as anything, but when you come to move them, you know, that's a threat to his, his band of mares and that's just what it is. And so he's doing his job, but he's a little overzealous in how he's doing it. So we'll go around him and just try to swing him this way and, uh, and try and take a real assertive approach uh, to him and what we're gonna do is move him around on this flat a few times before we take off the hill so that we sort of get him under control. We'll just keep him up here on this flat and keep turning him and, and work him a little bit and I'll try to work him as much as anything and um, once we've circled him a few times up here and we feel like we've got a little more control then we'll head him off the, off the ridge and down to the corrals. Okay, just hold him up here if we can. You know, really, he's only doing his job. He needs to know his job does not pertain to humans. There, and if you'll give ground like that, then I'm good. One of the things that we talk about a lot is that, you know, a lot of times ranch horses end up ranch horses by accident. In other words, you give, you give a cowboy a horse and he ranches on it for five years, and gosh, it's a ranch horse. We take a little different approach in that we spend the days that we're not out here, we spend in training teaching the horse how to handle this so that we're actually training the specialist for a job. And once he's been trained for this job out here, I feel like he's got a foundation that you can take him anywhere you want. He's, he's learned how to handle, he's learned how to handle his feet, he's been under pressure, he's, you know, uh, he's a veteran. He's an experienced soldier, an experienced uh, campaigner and all of a sudden I feel like, you know, he, he comes back a lot better individual than maybe he would have been if he just lived in a box stall, 12 by 12 box stall all his life. Go on, fella. Go on, fella. Let him ease, let him ease across. Let him ease across. As long as he's not standing us off, he's just waiting on the mares. Good boy. Good boy. 
Good job. It's not that different from life. Lots of us make mistakes. Thank goodness there's forgiveness. He's made some mistakes, but I think he's ready to be repentant. He's... Now the nice thing about having these babies up here is they, every kind of terrain, they've, they've been in it. You know what I mean? Come on, girls. I know you're thirsty, but you're gonna, the rest of the crowd's going to leave you behind. You know, first time you ask them to cross water, it's not the first time they've crossed it. They've been in and out of that situation a lot of times. My horse does have a bill of rights. Uh, he doesn't have the right to kick me or bite me or stomp on me or anything else, but he does have the right to the best and most humane care I can possibly afford to give to him. So if you've got that chance to let him out, you know, to graze on a quarter of an acre, that's great. Give him that opportunity. That's the best you can afford to give him. That's the best opportunity. And give him some time with another horse. Give him some time with a buddy so that he can get into that herd environment and get socialized and, and develop a relationship with other horses because horses are a social animal. Listen to how much they speak to each other. They are a social animal and we take that away from them a lot of times and when we do, sometimes we take away the best part of the horse. Thank you so much for joining me and until next week, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, the perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one true home.